good morning students so whether my screen is visible am i audible anyone yes sir uh, so good morning students so welcome to the new week uh, the module number 17 in the supply chain management subject the unit of the supply chain network design right so today we are going to see about the framework for the network decision network decisions right so framework for the network decisions right so before entering this class just we can brush up what are the terms we discussed in uh, previous classes right so generally the network design decisions is a very important one right so while because while designing the network right we have to see more lot of constraints right so what are the important terms will be there right so depending upon that term we have to decide whether the design is suitable for us or not right so the decision making is very very important one in any kind of actions right any kind of action the decision making is very important one right so depending upon the decision making the entire firms uh profitability may affects right so the design decisions it's a very important one so here the network design decisions right we have considered uh, four network design decisions right so one is a facility role one is the facility role one is the facility one is the facility role what is the role of the facility right so that's the first decision and the second decision will be the facility location where we, we should allocate the where we should keep that facility right so that facility location is a very important decision and the what much of capacity has to design right so what much of capacity has to allocate in a particular facility location right so that we have to see right that uh, uh, one more important decision and the market and the market and the demand allocations right so depending upon the market how we can supply a product then how the demand will be there right so depending upon that decision we have to allocate some materials in a particular location right so that decision also a uh, important one right so for the network design decision so here we can take the four is important decisions right so one is the facility location capacity allocation and the supply and the demand allocation so including this the facility role the facility role also a important one right so including the facility role we have taken the four decisions right we have taken a uh, four decisions of a network design decisions right so that you should remember then the what are the factors what are the factors will affect what are the factors will influence that particular network design decisions right so last class we seen the what is strategic factor the technological factor micro economic factor in the micro economic factor means the taxes tariffs the next change rate demands right so that is not in the category of the micro economic factors and for the political factors the infrastructures the new facility formations then the competitors then these are the cost right so logistics and the facility cost right so these are the factors which influencing more while designing the network design right so while uh in the designing of the network design uh the decision will be taken by considering these factors right by considering these factors it will be uh, gives a good optimized design right so these are the factors right these are the factors which will influence the network design decisions right so up to this we can discuss in the last class right then in this class we are going to see about the framework right so framework of the network design decisions right uh, the goal 
right a goal when uh, designing of the supply chain network what is the goal means to maximize to maximize the profit to maximize the profit of the firms right firms profit has to be uh, gives in the terms of a maximize and while giving the maximize profitability at the same time we have to satisfy the customer's need we have to satisfy the customer's need right in the terms of the demand as well as the responsiveness right so to design the effective network to design the effective network right so we must consider all the factors right all the factors so these factors right we, we must consider all these factors right and we have to consider some the global network design decisions we have to consider some global network design decisions right so these decisions will be uh, classified in the terms of the four phases right so these are the phases involved in a framework of the design network decisions right design network decisions right so these are the four phases right these are the four phases so the first phase will be the supply chain strategy or a design and the second phase the regional facility configurations and the third one is the potential sites right so what are the desirable potential sites and the location choices and the location choices right so these are the four phases of the network design decisions so we can see the one by one right so our the first phase will be the supply chain strategy or a design right so what are the strategies are there and what are the designs has to be considered right so first we have to define first we have to define what is a supply chain strategy or a design right so this is the phase framework right this is the framework right so here you can see the four phases right so in that four phases so what are the sub divisions are there you can see that right so we can see one by one right so the first network design framework right the first framework of the design network decision is the supply chain strategies right so the objective of the first phase the objective of the first phase is to define the firms to define the firms the broad supply chain the broad supply chain design right so it defines the large broad amount of the supply chain design so it includes right this includes the determining the stages in the supply chain whether the each supply chain functions will be performed in house or a outsourced one right so here it will de defines and determines right here it will defines and determines right so what is the supply chain design right so it defines the individual companies the supply chain network design and it will determines it will determines uh, the supply chain functions right whether it is an uh, uh, in in house functions right that is the inbound right inbound function as well as the outsourced to uh, functions right so first we can see the supply chain strategies so in the case of the situations right in the case of the situations right for example if i choose a medical emergency if i choose a medical emergency right so which type of the hospital i have chosen right so whether it is a nearby first condition whether it is a nearby right so if it is an emergency condition first we have to prefer the which of the hospitals is nearer by us right so that hospital we can take for the emergency situations right but the second situation if it is in a routine process we have to take a routine medicines right so on the time we are not preferring a nearby uh hospitals right so we have to go we have to see uh, good hospitals right so which hospitals will be suitable for us right so which hosp hospital will have some more uh, that insurance policies available then what are the schemes will be available right so that we can see right so these are the first term these are the first terms are whether are uh, the conditions right so whether the condition depending upon the condition whether i have to choose a routine type of supply chain 
or an emergency type of a supply chain right so that term first i have to choose right so that is the supply chain strategy that is the supply chain strategy right so in the supply chain strategy we have three terms right one you can see the business business strategy or a competitive strategy right business strategy or a competitive strategy and the global competitions so global competition and the, some constraints right so what are the constraints will be there while considering the supply chain strategy right so first we can see what is the business strategy or a competitive strategy right the factors right which contribute the proper understanding of the supply chain strategy or a proper uh, a framework of the supply chain strategy the internal constraints and the global competitions are the two major inputs these are the major inputs right so including these two major inputs so one more is the competitive strategy one is the competitive strategy right so we can see what is uh, competitive strategy right so in the strategy we all we already told that uh, why we are choosing the turkey for the most of the supply chain management right so there the developed uh, warehouses are there then it is a central place right so it will cover entire europe as well as the entire asia right so the most of the facility locations will be uh, located in the turkey is a uh, warehouse stations right so the in the competitive world right how we can reduce the cost how we can reduce the cost will meet the customers right so the customers will expect uh, the material the customer will expect the material at the low cost at the same time they may expect the high responsiveness right so we have to satisfy so the competitive strategy is a very important one that is a business strategy is a very important one right then the second is the global competition right so what is going in the global level and what is going on in the local level right so with respect to the industry we have to see the competition level right so whether it is in local level marketing or a, a global level marketing that we have to see right then the constraints right so what are the constraints or there right the internal constraints while making the supply chain strategies so the internal constraints are related to the capital the growth strategy and the existing networks etc right so these things are play a major role a vital role because uh, you can see a uh, taken of tata motors right tata motors right so on the time the tata motor launches the tata nano right tato nano right so if uh, the tata nano is newly entered to the market right so it will reach the customers is very easy man why the tata motors is already the existing network the tata motors is already the existing network distribution is there right so they can easily reach right they can easily reach the customers right so uh, here you can see uh, a new product right whatever may be the xy z product right that product has to be launched in the market right so they don't have any distribution networks right so it will reach us the customers in very slow manner right so why because the distribution network is poor right but in the case of the tata nano in the case of the tata nano it will reach the customers in very uh, superior manner right why because the tata motors the tata motors will have a good distribution network for the other products for the for the other uh, products either the other uh, cars or uh, uh, products watches right so they have uh, plenty of products are there so the network distribution will be good right so what are the existing is there right that has to be considered in a internal constraints right so what are the capitals are there and what are the growth strategies are there and what are the existing networks are there right so that has to taken into account for to planning the supply chain strategies right so whether i have to build a new facility or we have to use the existing one right 
so for the recent example for the recent example so we have seen most of places in the nexa showrooms right so what is the nexa showroom it is one of the maruti's showroom right it is one of the maruti's showroom right so by the competitive world for the global competition right so they create a new type of the distribution type um, strategy they create a new type of distribution strategy right maruti nexa right so it is depends right what type of the growth is there in the strategy right what type of the growth and what are the capital requirement we have right so that we have to decide the supply chain strategy right so it is the first phase right is it clear is it the first phase right so the first phase starts with the clear definitions right it starts with the clear definitions to the firm the competitive strategy as the set of the customers need the supply chain aims to satisfy the customers right then the supply chain strategies then specifies the what are, what is the capabilities right what is the capabilities and then what is the competitive strategies right so that we have to see that we have to uh, have a clear definition right so the supply chain strategy gives the clear definition about the what are the customers need right how the customer supply chain aims to satisfy the customers right then how uh, the specifies the customers capability right so in the term of the competitive strategy or that is the business strategy right so next the managers must forecast the evolution of the global competitions right so how the global competitions are there right so the manager has to see right so how the global competitions are there right so whether the global competitions are in the in each market whether it is the level of the local market or a globalized one right that we have to see right so the managers must also identify the what are the constraints right so what are the constraints on available the capital the growth and the existing facilities or existing network or we have to give a new partnering right so that terms we have to see so so based on this based on this uh, or based on the competitive strategy of the firm it results the supply chain strategy right so an analysis of the competition and economic scale or a scope and the constraints and the constraints so manager must determine the broad supply chain network of the particular firm right so this is the first phase by right? supply chain strategy is it clear is it clear anyone yes then we can move to the second phase right so the second phase is a regional facility configuration the second phase is the regional facility configurations regional facility configuration right so it is the second phase of the uh, framework of the supply chain network design right so now on the basis of what you have the centralized regional considerations and the regional considerations come for the tariffs tax incentives like uh, uh, new states right new states from the india right and the existing states of india right so there we have a uh, difference in the tariff as well as the tax in incentives right so while considering the phase 2 while considering the phase 2 we have to see what is the tax and what are the tax incentives to the new organization new click created uh, uh, new facilities right so what are the tariffs are there and what are the tax are there right so we have to see right if the government will give us a good tariff and a good tax in incentives as a result the many mnc's right the many mnc's willing to open their facilities in a particular place or a particular state right so the government the government has to give the tariffs and the tax incentives right it will increase it will increase the facilities 
the new type of facilities will develop our the state wise right in some type of the tax incentives so what type of the tax incentives are available in the regional areas right that you have to see then what are the regional demand that we have to see whether we have any regional demands or not right so most of the states they were are not having the kind of any kind of the regional demand but because of the heavy tax in incentives right the heavy tax incentives the many facilities comes into the uh, different type of the areas right then the political stability then the political stability the exchange rate and the demand risk right so in the factor itself i uh, uh, we, we discussed so if the political stability is there surely the um, the owners right the owners are the multinational companies uh, willing to install their new facility in a particular place depending upon the political stability right if the political stability is too good then surely they can uh, build a new build a new facilities in a particular area right so then the competitive environment right so whether we can survive in the market or not right so how the environment will be there how the demand will be there in a particular area or whether uh, the place is very suitable for uh, all the inventory storage transportations and the aggregating logistics right so that terms we have to see right so these are the major terms in the uh, phase 2 the regional facility right the regional facility configurations right so the objective of the second phase of the network design that is the regional facility will be uh, a located their potential roles and their approximate capacities right the uh, approximate capacities right so the analysis of the phase 2 starts with so the analysis right the analysis of the phase 2 starts with the forecasting and the demand right what is the forecasting right so they have to forecast earlier right so whether the product will be uh, 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 required by the customers or not right whether the customers are willing to buy or not right so that term we have to forecast right so the forecast of the demand by the country or a region first we have to see right then the such type of the forecast must include the measure of the size of the demand right the forecast right by helping of the forecast we have we have to see the size right so what is the size of the demand right so that we have to see then we have to see the variety of the customers requirement we have to see the variety of the customers requirement and uh, it will be across to the different regions right so in a particular region they have requirement will be different then the other region the customers requirement will be the different right so we have to see the different type of the variety of the products variety of the materials which the customers requirement right so either in the same region or in a different regions right then we have to consolidate we have to consolidate the homogeneous requirement right so which of the products will be common right so the favor common the consolidated facilities right so where the requirements that across the country or a small region right that we have to see right then the managers to identify whether the economic of the scale or a scope it it can play a significant role or not that is it will be reducing the cost to the customers are not right that we have to see then the available production technologies right what are the technologies are there right so that we have to see right so if the economic of the scale or the scope are a very significant one right then it will have a better facility to serve the many markets right so if the economic scale is somewhat good then it will sustain the market right it will good in the market right so that we have to see then the next one is the owners that is the, the managers must identify the demand risk right 
so what are the demand risk and the exchange rate and the political risk that is associated with the particular regional markets right so that we have to see then we have to identify the tariffs and the tax incentives tax and uh, sorry tariff and tax intens incentives right so that we have to see and we have to identify the competitive we have to identify the competitors in each region right so each region who are the competitors right so how the, they are doing their competitive strategies right so that we have to analyze right then we have to locate our facility then we have to locate our facility then the facility will be needed to be a located a close to the competitors facility it is very far close to the competitors facility right then the desired response time for the each market and the logistics right so the desired response time for the each market and the logistic cost its aggregate level that is we have to identify right so in the phase 2 in the phase 2 what are the terms we have to see so first one is the production technologies right so either the scope economic of scope is how the economic of scopes are there right so whether the product will be reach to the customers in an economic scale or not right so that we have to see the flexibilities right what are the flexibilities are there right so how impact it will create to the customers right that we have to see in the terms of the production technologies and the competitive environment the taxes then the political demands then the regional demands right so what are the regional demands are there then the logistics factors logistics cost right so these six terms these six terms will be considered in while making the designing of the network decisions right in the face of the regional facility configurations regional facility configurations right so for this the second phase we have some network models are there right so that we can see in the next class right that we can see in the next class so before any this class we can see these two right then the third phase the third phase right so what is the third phase the objective of the third phase is to select the a set of desirable places right desirable potential sites within the region within the each region we have to see the we have to select the desirable potential sites right so where the facility is to be located or where the facilities are to be located that we have to select the areas in the particular region or um, out of the region right so the sites should be selected based on the analysis of the infrastructure right so analysis of the infrastructure available to support the desired production methodologies right so it's about to production methodologies right so it will be in the form of two right one is the hard infrastructure requirement and the soft in one infrastructure requirement right so if it is in the hard infrastructure requirement if it is the hard infrastructure in requirement means it includes the availability of the suppliers transport service the communications utilities and the warehouse facilities or there means it will be considered as the hard infrastructure requirement it is hard infrastructure requirements right so if it is in the soft infrastructure requirements it includes the availability of the skilled workforces the skilled labors right the workforce turnover and the community uh, representative for to do the business in the industries right so that we have to see right so in the desired side we have to see we have to fulfill the production methodologies by using the available infrastructures right so in the infrastructures we have to divide into two terms so one is the hard infrastructure requirements and the soft infrastructure requirements right so for the hard infrastructure requirements we include the suppliers availability of the suppliers transportation services then the communications and then the utilities and the warehouse facilities right so that are all in the categories the hot infrastructure uh, requirements and for the soft infrastructure means so the availability of the soft skills that is the skilled labors skilled workforces and the workforce turnovers 
then the community representative to do the business and uh, the industries right so that are the soft infrastructure requirements then the fourth phase then the fourth phase will be the location choices right so the objective of the fourth phase is to select the precise location and the capacity allocation for the each facility right so that we have to decide right sorry the precise location and the capacity allocation of the each facility so the attention is restricted to the desirable sites right the desirable potential sites that is the phase 3 desirable the potential sites in the phase 3 and the network is to be designed to the maximum the total profit maximum the total profits taking into the account to expect the margin and the demand in each market so the various logistics and the facility cost are involved right various logistics and the facility cost right various logistics and the facility cost is involved right and uh, we have some taxes and tariffs of the each locations as right? we have tax and tariffs of the each locations so these are the methodologies right these are the methodologies will be used these are the phases will be used to create uh, a framework for the business uh, network that is the decision right so decision design networks right we have to see these four phases right so in these four phases we have some models also right that models will be discussed in upcoming classes right so so we have some models also right is the weather time sir okay right. still five minutes are there huh? right so the models of the facility location and the capacity allocation is to provide the maximum profitability of the industries right so is to provide the maximum to the uh, overall profitability right the manager's goal when the locating the facilities along the capacity allocations right facility location and the capacity allocation should to maximize the overall profitability of the firm right so which results it will provide which results it will provide the customers with the appropriate responsiveness right the, it will provide the customers with appropriate responsiveness right so that's the important one then the revenues comes from the sales of the product whether the cost rises from the facility labor the transportation materials and inventories right so these are the costs will increase the product right then the profit of the firms is also affected by the tax and the tariffs also right so the the profit may affected by the tax and the tariffs so ideally the most of the firms right most of the firms the profits the end the profits after the tariffs and the tax it should be maximized when we are uh, sorry when the designing of the supply chain network right so we should maximize the profit after the tariff and the taxes so uh, depending upon that we have to design a supply chain network then the managers must consider the many trade off during the uh, network design right so if we are building a new facility right if we are building a facilities to serve the local markets it will reduce the transportation cost and provides the fast responsiveness uh, to the customers but it will increase the facility cost as well as the inventory cost right whether it's correct or not right so if we are building a new facility if you are building a new facility in a crowded area in a crowded area in a, or in a uh, middle of the city right what will happen so there the transportation cost is less to the customers and the customers responsiveness the customer is customers will get a product in a very fast manner so the responsive time is very low at the same time right 
it will increase us the facility cost and the inventory cost right so that we have to see right so the managers use the network design models in the two situations in the two situations right what are the two situations that we can see the first one is the models are used to decide on the locations where the facilities will be established and the capacity to be assigned to each facility right to each facility so the managers must make this decision considering a time horizon over which location and the which capacity it will not altered right that we have to see in the first situation then the second situation the models are used to assign the current demand right the current demand uh, to the available facility and identify the lanes along the which product will be transported right that we have to see which which product will be transported right so that we have to see those are the customers must consider these decisions at least an annual basis of the demand price exchange rate and the tariff changes and the tariff changes right so in the both cases the both two cases the goal is to maximize the profit right to maximize the profit of the firm while satisfying the customer's need while satisfying the customer's need right so here we have some informations we have some informations also right so what are the informations are available or what are the information has to collect while making the design decisions while making the design decisions what are the information has to uh, take what are the information has to collect or what are the informations are available right so that we have to see so these are the informations right so local the the location right the location supply source and markets then the location of the potential facility sites the demand forecast by the market and what are the facilities labors material cost in the particular region then what are the transportation cost between the pair of right so what is the distribution right the distribution makes the uh, activities between the any pair right any pair or any pair of uh, the stages right so that transportation cost has to be taken in a particular region then what are the inventory cost right what are the inventory cost are there in a particular location and for the particular quantity then the sales price of the product in a particular state and the different regions right so what are the and what are the tax and tariffs in the particular places and what are the response time and the service factors are there right so this information has to take uh, while making the design decisions while making the design decisions right so up to this we can stop here right so the optimization models that we can see in the next class right so is it clear in this class is, the class is clear now in this class do you have any doubt